Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Wow, it's cold this morning. In the comments section, let me know how cold it was this morning or this week. Um, here, I know, I'm. it's not that big a deal. I think we got 26 degrees. So, I know, you guys in the zeros or negatives are probably like, ah, oh, Mr. Hino, give it a break. Anyway, today's video is going to be... Uh, you saw strategies that my students are using for their Sumo Bot 2 competition. Today's video is going to be Mr. Hino's strategies for the Sumo Bot 2 competition. So you're going to have to stay with me. Okay, so. Definitely, I want you, those of you students, to figure this out for yourselves. But this is just some assistance that might help you in your sumo competition if you're going to be participating in one. So this is just something that I have seen and I have observed um, just watching students for the last four years do sumo competitions that I've noticed, ah, when they do this, it usually helps them win. So come on, let's check out this robot and let's go to the sumo board. Okay, first things first, and no, this is never a guarantee, but this is something to definitely consider as you're building your sumo bot. If there is some type of weight limitation, I would say make your sumo bot go to the fullest extent that it can be as far as weight. Um, for my sumo competition, we just have a size limitation as far as your robot needs to be able to fit on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. But we don't have weight classes, we don't have a weight limitation. So if you do have a weight limitation, I would say push the weight as much as you can and still being legal. It does, it does make your robot a little tougher to maneuver as far as you know. now you're having to spin and push a more weight. But just, you guys know the physics uh, with mass as far as the more mass you have, the more you should be able to push. So, um, so on this one here, just think about two things. Think about the weight and being able to just push a smaller robot. But also think too about um, just having your robot meet this size requirement and not go too overboard. But make it so that your robot can push a smaller robot. Let's go over to the second one. The second one is kind of a two-parter. Um, now, obviously, this robot here, the front is over here on this side. But like a shovel, um, I've noticed the better robots have something to scoop or get underneath another robot. You guys know the physics of pushing something where you definitely want to go lower. Um, you want to push as low on a robot as you can to maximize the force. So any type of shovel, any type of ramp is good to get underneath a robot because I've seen robots like this one lift up another robot, get underneath it, and thus you know lift up the front and just t totally start pushing it off. So um, the tough thing that you have to consider though is the on the, this one here, this is actually in the back. So this one here, I'm sure in the program, they have it going backwards to, to maybe push. But you'd have to th consider where do you put your ultrasonic sensor and color sensor uh, to make sure you can still have this ramp. So I've seen students before, they'll stagger their pieces so they might be able to put a color sensor in between their ramp. That's something to think about. And the other cool thing about this ramp is if you can take a look, the border on my board is white. So this team purposely made this ramp white, hoping that the other robot's color sensor will see this and actually back up. Because in the program, um, if a robot is coming to this white border, it will see the white line and there's in the program an automatic backup. So in this one here, if the color sensor of this robot is attacking it from the front, if the color sensor sees this white, their robot will actually back up, making it easier for this robot to push off. Let's go to the third and last one. Okay, this is the third strategy and I actually 
some students and I actually figured this out as the robot was turning and I thought this was pretty genius. In our program, the robots start off facing opposite directions. And in the program, there is supposed to be a two second stop. And then when those two seconds are over, this robot is supposed to spin activating the ultrasonic sensor for the robot to come, you know, charge at the other robot. Um, and I have had students before tell me, Mr. Hino, which way should I do my spin? And that's completely up to where your robot is positioned on the board. And so I had a student once tell me, Mr. Hino, should I have two separate programs depending on where I am on the board? And I thought, oh, that was just the most genius idea I've ever think I thought about. So if you take a look at this board, here's what we mean by knowing which way to turn. If your spin, let's say you're this robot here on the left. If your robot is spinning this way, that is not good because this robot's going to have to make a full rotation before it even sees this robot. So it would be wise for this team if they knew that they were going to be on this side of this robot to have a program that makes it turn this way. That way they're seeing this robot a lot faster and it gives this robot a less chance of, you know, beating this one to the punch as far as seeing it and pushing it. So, um, so if you're looking at the position of this, obviously this team would want, let's say the robots were reversed. So if they're on this side, then they have a program that makes this robot turn left um, first. So that's what I mean by it would be wise to have two separate programs wherever you are on the board. And you might want to be smart and you title it, maybe title it something like, you know, turn left or turn right so that you know exactly which way your robot will turn. Um, we actually didn't find this out until people started using their GearBot. They noticed that their GearBot was super slow and turning because it's geared down. So the students went, wait, 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 wait. We have to figure out which way to turn first so they're not making a full rotation before it sees this other robot. So number three is just a suggestion of having two separate programs, one turning to the left, one turning to the right. So if you're on either side of the other robot, you can um, obviously make that turn faster and hit the robot quicker. Okay, guys, so if you're in the middle of a sumo competition, hopefully this has helped you, and good luck in your competition. Okay, guys, I am Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's LEGO Robotics. I'm out.